All right, today we're going to be talking about graphing log functions. Uh, so the big thing that's going to help us graph log functions, especially without a calculator, is under understanding the fact that the inverse of an exponential function is a log function. So to help us graph this first log equation that we're going to do here, we're going to go and eventually graph uh, log base 2 of x here in just a second. So what we're going to do for that is actually make uh, a table for y equals 2 raised to x. So we'll do this here by using our common values of 0, 1, and 2, and then negative 1, negative 2. All right, we've made this table a few times if you need help graphing exponential functions. That's a couple of videos back. So anyways, anything raised to 0 is going to be 1. Uh, anything, if we do 2 raised to 1 right there, that'll be 2. And then 2 squared is going to be 4. And then don't forget about your negative exponents. 2 raised to negative 1, that was the fraction 1 half. And then the last one was going to be 2 raised to negative 2, which will be 1 fourth. Okay. So then you got 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4. And then we can get these half units here. All right. And then there's your graph. So notice... Let's see if I can get that a little bit better. There's your graph here for this. And that is your graph of that function. So we're also going to talk about doing the inverse function of this right here. Remember, to find an inverse, we switch x and y. And then we resolve for y. And then to do this one here, we, we do the inverse. So we're going to write log base 2 of x equals y. So log base 2 of x equals y, or we're going to call it y inverse in this case. So then we can go and graph by switching the tables. So we found the inverse. We're going to go ahead and now go plot our new table here. So watch how this looks here. So now we're going to say 1 fourth comma negative 2 instead of negative 2, 1 fourth. And then the same thing, 1 half, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, and then 4, 2. And then we're going to try and plot all of those as best we can. So if we go 1 fourth comma negative 2, that'll be real close here to the y-axis. And then we got 1 half, negative 1. All right, and then we had the uh, 1 comma 0. And then we had 2 comma 1. And then I guess we had 4 and 2. Notice with your log graph, it has a different type of asymptote. The asymptote for this right here, for log graphs, are of the form x equals. So like if we say x equals 0 right here, that's where the graph levels off. So now we can go and put the uh, domain and range and all that stuff here. So I'm going to rewrite it down here. So the inverse, we're doing a log equation, log base 2 of, I guess, x right there. And then we can do domain and range and all that stuff. So it's from negative infinity to infinity for your domain. Or I'm sorry, no, not negative infinity. It's from 0 to infinity for domain. Do my other function there. Because if, if you look here, you have the vertical asymptote. So, yep, so sorry. This is from 0 to infinity. Now, the range, since it goes up and then it goes down forever, you know, over here it kind of goes up and right, but it does go up forever. So we say the range, that's actually from negative infinity to infinity. Okay. Now, depending on the problem, sometimes they don't have y-intercepts. So usually they're going to have an x-intercept at some point. x-intercept in this case was 1, 0. And the asymptote, we, we write it as an x equals line right there. x equals line is always vertical. So we'll say this is x equals 0 right there. So that is that. That's how you graph that. Now let's talk about graphing logs using your graphing calculator. This next one here asks us to graph the log. I think this is supposed to be, um, I think this is supposed to be base right here. I'm not sure what the author of this was implying, but we, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, graph log base one half of x. Like that. We're using our graphing calculator. So I'm going to pull that up here real quick. If you go to y equals, you can type in all that stuff. Remember to find the log button 
Uh, you can hit the regular log, but that's implied of a base of 10. So to get the logs with the special bases, we have to hit math. And then we got to scroll down, I think, all the way to A. And then we're going to put base, I guess, one half. I'm going to put just one divided by two, kind of like that right there. And then I guess we'll put X here. And we'll compare that to log base two. Uh, so if you look there, this log graph here is a little bit different than the previous one we did here because it's it's still leveling off at zero. It's just going the other direction. I guess you could say it's a you know a reflection. And the reason being, uh, if you go and find the inverse, you'd find that this is actually a decay function as far as exponentially, and that's why it's going down here instead of going up like the other graph right there. So that's how you graph using your graphing calculator with the logs. So I think most of the times, most of the future classes you'll take, especially if you're doing like all the pre-AP stuff, they're going to make you do it without a calculator. So they'll get real you know, exciting with those. So uh, we're going to try two extra examples here without a graphing calculator. And I guess my approach to these here. So you got log base 2 of x and then minus 1. So first of all, to graph these without a calculator, what I'm going to do, first of all, fx, we can change that to y. We're going to switch x and y. And then I'm going to go and find the inverse. And then I'm going to make a table for the inverse. And then I'm going to inverse that back. And that will help me find the log. And it will make more sense when I do it here in just a second. So just bear with me on that. So switch x and y. All right, now before we switch forms, I'm going to add that 1 to the other side. Because you can't really switch forms unless logs by itself. So then we'll say log base 2 of y, and then we'll switch forms, always start with the base. So we're going to say 2 raised to all of this stuff right here. So you're going to put parentheses around it. So 2 raised to all of that stuff equals y. So we're going to say y inverse equals 2 raised to x plus 1 right there. And that's your inverse equation. Okay, the next thing here that I'm going to do is make a table for that. And then I'm going to inverse my table, and that'll help me go back and graph this right here. So if we do that, um, let's see here. I think, yeah, let's plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and then 2. So if we're doing this here, you probably got to go a couple steps at a time here. So here, I guess let's keep it red here so I don't confuse y'all. So this will be 2 raised to negative 2 plus 1. Just the same thing as 2 raised to negative 1 right there. So that'll be the fraction, 1 half. If we do 2 raised to negative 1 plus 1, that'll be 0 up there as the exponent. So that'll get us 1. So if we actually plug in 0, that'll be 0 plus 1, which can be 2 to the first. So we'll say that's 2. And if you kind of see the pattern, it looks like we're doubling everything after this. So 1 plus 1, that'll be 2 raised to 2. That'll be 2 squared, which is 4. So you can probably guess that the last one here is going to be 8. <clears throat> now, if you want to graph that, you can. But I'm going to make an inverse table so I can graph the actual log function. So I'm going to graph the log function here in blue. So we'll go back and switch this table. So 1 half, comma, negative 2. We'll go 1, comma, negative 1. We'll go 2, comma, 0. We'll go 4, comma, 1. And then we'll go 8, comma, 2. Okay, and then we'll go and plot all those points there. So 1 half, common negative 2, so that'll be down here. You got uh, negative, or I'm sorry, positive 1, negative 1. Okay, you got 2 comma 0. You got 4 comma 1. And then 2 comma, or I'm sorry, 8 comma 2. So there you go. There's your graph. And then there you go. If you kind of look, you can see that it's going to level off eventually at zero here. So a couple of things that extra that we need to do. We need to do domain and range and then transformations. So we'll say the domain here is going to be from zero to positive infinity. We're going to say the range, that's from negative infinity to infinity. All right, now as far as transformations go, since the minus 1 is not inside of parentheses with this x right here, it's applying that you do the log graph and then shift it down 1. So we're going to say the transformations 
this thing is moving down one unit. And I believe that is all we need to do there for that graph right there. So there you go. That is graphing a log without a calculator. And we'll do the next one kind of the same idea. So let's go ahead and try this next one here. So you got this plus one inside the parentheses. Notice that's a little bit different here. So like before, let me just totally change the color so we don't get confused here. Kind of crammed here, but that's okay. So we'll say that this is Y. We're going to switch forms. Since the log is by itself, we can go ahead and switch forms right now. So we're going to go to, I guess I need to switch X and Y here first. Log is 2, Y plus 1. So now let's switch forms here. So we'll go 2 raised to X equals Y plus 1. 2 raised to X equals Y plus 1. That y plus 1, since it's in parentheses, it stays together when you switch forms. And then get your y by itself by subtracting 1. So we will write this as y inverse equals 2 raised to x and then minus 1. The minus 1 will not be up there in the exponent. Okay. And then from here, we will make a table like we did before. I'll do the 0, 1, 2, and then negative 1, negative 2 as well. Okay. So everything's going to be subtracted by 1 right here. If you think about it, that, that'll move the asymptote down 1, I guess. So like for example, if I plug in 0 right here, 2 raised to 0, it's going to be 1, and then 1 minus 1 will be 0 right there. Okay, If I raise it to 1, that'll be 2 to the first, and then minus 1, that'll be, well, not 2, let's try 1 right there. Okay, if we do 2 raise to 2, and then subtract 1 from that. That'll be 4 minus 1. That's going to give me 3. Okay, 2 raise to negative 1. That'll be 1 half. And then, let's see if this will let me do this here. So 1 half minus 1 right there. So that'll be negative half. And then the last one, 2 raise to negative 2. Um, and then minus 1, that'll be 1 fourth. And then I guess 1 fourth minus 1... It's going to get us, uh, I guess, negative 3 fourths. There you go. And then let's go ahead and put all those together. So negative 2, negative 3 fourths. Oh, I'm sorry. Before we graph that, we need to switch x and y. Getting ahead of myself there. So yeah, to graph the log function, yeah, go back and switch. So it's negative 3 fourths, comma, negative 2. It's negative 1 half, comma, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 3, 2. And then now we can go plot those. So negative 3, 4, so negative 2. It's kind of hard to get here, but I'm going to kind of guesstimate about right there. And then negative half, and then negative 1, it's about right there. 0, 0, so right through the origin, 1, comma, 1. And then three comma two. There you go. Now, as far as where this graph levels off, since we have a plus one in the parentheses, that basically moved our asymptote to the left one unit. So I'm going to do like a little dotted line right here. Usually, that's a good thing to draw here for the asymptotes. And then you'll draw that kind of going up like that right there, and then you're good to go. That would be your graph. As far as domain and range, domain little bit different here. Since the asymptote's at negative 1, we're going to say from negative 1 to infinity. Range will be all real numbers. So negative infinity to infinity. And then as far as transformations go, we're going to say that this graph moved to the left one unit. And then there you go. Alright, and that is it here for today.